Hello guys and welcome to your official one year update on the LZ compound. Uh, it hasn't officially been one year since we made the reveal video. It's actually been 11 months to the exact date, but we have a lot of busy stuff coming up and today seemed like a perfect day to kind of give you guys a little update, a little tour, show you some stuff that you might already have seen, show you some stuff that you haven't, but overall I've seen a lot of people asking for a comprehensive compound update. So here it is. So one of the first things we did, we had good old Kev come by and power wash this entire place. It went from being a dusty mess to a beautiful concrete paradise, complete transformation. Uh, Mike will put some clips in so you guys can see what it looked like before, but it was so dusty that you would drift or you'd do any sort of motorsport activity here. And then afterwards you'd be like hawking up black dust and gross things. Keeping up on the concrete is kind of tough because some areas like this you'll see that are under trees have already gotten like back to black and a little gray. Um, although maybe he just didn't power wash here. It doesn't look like he hit it. Either way, like certain areas that are under trees and stuff don't hold up as well, but the areas that are out in the sun still look brand new. I know getting a scrubber and scrubbing stuff would probably help, but the concrete dust has been killer because everything gets dusty. We'll go back in the trails first. The golf cart's not really meant for this. This is supposed to be for side-by-sides. We want to eventually build up some really nice trails back here, but just haven't really had the time. We did, however, clear out a little bit of this, so you can go a lot faster than you could originally. So this back here is our official burn pile. Uh, we don't know how to have a fire. It's not something that we really like expertise in, but we figured if we threw our trash in a pile, we could probably burn it. We just only know how to do the first part. So if you're a fireman and you could help us, we need to burn all this stuff because there's a lot. I'll give you guys a quick tour of our burn. It's a big pile. I can't imagine, like, I can't believe how well the golf cart actually, like, takes these trails. It's kind of fun. This trail looks, like, really nice. Yeah. All right, the first stop that we're going to make is, uh, I don't know if I would say it's a sore subject for Mike, because he's not going to be able to comment back because I'm mic'd up. Get it? Mic'd up, sore subject for Mike. It's a really bad joke. Lots of dad jokes in this video. This right here is the water station from hell. Mm -hmm. Since we moved in here, this water station doesn't replenish fast enough for both the car wash and this four bedroom home here. So pretty much every single day since we've moved into the compound, someone has had to go to the city and get like a insanely large trailer of water for that house to be able to live. Originally, it seemed like a very easy fix and it's not insanely difficult. It's gonna be expensive, but the problem is the water systems out here are so annoying that every well company we try to get out here sees the address and they're just like, huh, I'll go make money somewhere else because it's a pain in the ass. We basically live in the ocean. We're so close to sea level and the water here is so tricky to work with that very few well companies are down to do it. I think we finally actually have one here today that seems promising, but uh, that has definitely been a nightmare. So we've got some hardcore construction actually going over on this side right now. This is the outdoor almost patio. I don't know what you'd call it. So if you saw in the last video with, uh, that TJ made, you saw that this place has actually been built out. Basically until Drift HQ got their shop set up, I think I'm locked out. They've been doing some work in here. So two of the lifts that used to be in one of the other buildings that we'll show you guys later are now in here. They've got a nice little tire rack set up, a little uh, swamp cooler thing in here. Um, and it's kind of a cool area. It's got lights, it's outdoors, but it's also netted in, which helps with some of the mosquitoes and stuff. But it's cool from seeing what this was before to now. I wonder if that's how they used this before. Maybe, maybe not. Probably, actually. I don't know. It had the lift poles in it. You're right, it did have lift poles in it. Now this building you guys haven't seen anything on in a while. This was an auxiliary storage building that had lifts pretty much the whole extent of this. Uh, but Drift HQ needs a shop. This building seemed to be a perfect fit for that. So all the lifts have been removed. We sold pretty much all of them. There's still a few remaining that you'll see over there. And this building's about to get painted and renovated to become a shop. So if you guys wanna learn more about that, there will be a whole video series on the Drift HQ channel going over this place. But already it looks huge with all those lifts out of here. Under here, there's usually cars stored, but because it's kind of in the process of everything moving to get that shop set up, right now it's just kind of auxiliary storage. And then in this building, this is where the LZ team has some of their cars and their projects stored. So we've got Mike Supra, got Johan Supra. We talked about that on video, right? Yeah. Okay. And then we've got Booth's S15. That's Sean's brother's car. And then we got Garza's car. So this is kind of a workshop area. We were originally going to put the dyno in here, um, but it just didn't really make sense. And it's a much better building suited for a few different car projects than just like 
wasting this whole space for just a dyno. All right, so we'll rip through here. Got some random trailers stored everywhere. There's a dog. There's two Chelsea Denofas. There's Duarte. Hi, guys. Then we've got more trailers. And then we've got more cars being stored, rental cars, friends' cars. There's cars everywhere. Some will even say you can spot a wild Jimmy Oaks car in the bushes. Um, our gator that we had in here, if you remember, we had a gator a long while back. I think we scared him away. We haven't seen him in a minute. Um, and then there's another one that Marco fed a hot dog. Was it Marco that fed him a hot dog? Yeah, it was Marco that fed him a hot dog, which is a big no-no. Then he became too comfortable. He tried to eat someone and then he disappeared. That's what happened. Actually, I, I <laughs> that's, that, that's what happened to Mike Sum. No, that made it sound like we killed the gator. He just disappeared. We didn't, we didn't interfere with said gator. Got a little trailer parking storage over here. I'm not gonna show you guys inside the houses because they are people's homes, but I will tell you that this homes some of the Drift HQ crew, and then the other house homes some of the LZ crew, and also homes a bunch of cars. This section back here is one of my favorites just because the concrete looks so freaking clean, and this lift building is one of my favorites. You guys have seen this building, I feel like, quite a lot recently, but we'll do a quick walkthrough and just kind of briefly graze over the cars. This isn't like a full tour of my car collection, but um, this building, we really haven't done much to other than clean it. So it does look nice and the floors are clean. So this effectively, as I originally intended, became the area that stores my car collection. Um, I don't really keep it AC'd in here, but I do have it remove some of the humidity, which is nice. Uh, it's just very expensive to keep all the buildings um, like not AC'd or not hot. So. This building, my cars, this building is basically turned into Duarte's slash my friend's storage slash Drew Z92 collection. So walk through, you can see a bunch of cool Drift HQ green cars. It's pretty much all Duarte's. I mentioned that this E46 is mine. And then down here, we've got the wild collection of E92s that you guys saw the video on. Vargas has got two cars here. And then Pat has an S14 here. And we have the Barn Find Miata. And then there's a car under a cover that I'm not gonna show you guys. Oh yeah, Jimmy Oaks, again. We also home Jimmy Oaks truck, Jimmy Oaks trailer, Jimmy Oaks pit bikes are somewhere back there. <laughs> Some say that Jimmy Oaks might be moving down with the amount of stuff that he's leaving here. I wish it was true. Maybe it will be someday, but Connecticut's pretty great. So I'd be mad at him if he moved out. Again, this building did absolutely nothing, but this lift is new. This lift wasn't here before. We took it out of the building that is the Drift HQ shop. I don't know if we're gonna put one here. I kinda of like having one open spot so you don't like walk right in the door into a lift and you can kinda of get a better view of the building. Um, but uh, yeah, again, just cleaned it up and that's about it. We'll go through my favorite scary cut through. Don't go through this part at night, it gets sketchy. Uh, we'll take a right here and you guys can see what has turned into more junk storage. We've got a wall of used tires. I think there's some broken down AC units that we threw back there. Did those get, I mean, oh no, we actually threw those out. We had to steal the copper out of them. Every penny counts. That's it. <laughs> I have no idea what's in there, but it definitely doesn't look like no, fuel. it looks like oil. Oil mixed with rusty junk. This building over here, which was uh, internally referred to as the sandblasting booth, has turned into a few things. So this building right here, This is my official stash of tires. Yes, it's a little ignorant, I know, but I got a lot of cars. There's probably only one spare set of tires in here per car, if we're being honest. There's a lot of tires in here. And it's cool, it already, it already had lights, all you had to do was clean it out and move the tire shelves in here. Um, and then whenever we're mounting tires, we just come here with a golf cart, load it up, and this would take a lot of space inside of a shop, so being able to have it all out here uh, just frees up space and it makes it a lot easier versus having it in a smaller area because you can look and you can see what tires and they're really easy to pull out. There's a lot of linearity in the tire system in here. This building in here, I think is an absolute show, but let's find out. Uh, so sometimes there's stuff in things and I don't want to look at it anymore or see it because it's getting in the way of other stuff. So I feel like the, the ongoing thing is, ah, oh, just throw it in the tractor room. Ah, oh, just throw it in the tractor room. And I haven't been here in a while. And now all the stuff that I've been getting in my way has wound up in the tractor room. Not too fun if we ever want to get anything out of here, but it's not in the shop. And I love that for me. Over here, this used to be the handy dandy tool shed that came with the compound. This has turned into Colette storage. So she also has tires and other body kits and random things that she doesn't want to have stored in her shop. Um, so it's cool, we'll cleared it out, threw some stuff in the trash, yep. Another unforeseen headache here. Uh, 
It's actually easier than we originally thought to get deliveries here, but once they get in, even though we got a nice pretty little sign that makes it very clear where they need to go, the amount of time wasted per day of delivery drivers calling because they're lost because they've gotten trapped by some maze here or slammed into the side of their delivery truck by a 350Z with a crackle pop tune um, happens more often than you think. Not the 350Z part, but them getting lost. Uh, so yeah, that's we need to do a better job at signage. I'm thinking about doing like a typical like Disney Park thing with like the wooden signs with arrows and things. Um, but we're working on that. Out here, we have where I store my black trailer. So there's a nice little canopy there, it's perfect. Keeps it from sitting out in the sun and getting rained on. And then over here, we've got some more trailer storage. That's our water trailer that gets filled up once a day. Thought I was lying. It's ridiculous when you think about it. Uh, over here, uh, this is internally referred to as Colette's shop because it is internally, actually, Colette's shop. So we're pulling into Colette's shop. And then you can see this building hasn't really changed much. We had to fix the lift because the lift stopped working. Um, but she's been working on all her projects in here. Colette, are you here? She said, yeah. I have a lapel mic on so they can only see you, but they can't hear you. Can you come do like a cute wave for my video? Just like stick your head out of the door and just wave. Uh, actually, we're gonna show her office real quick. It's gonna trigger her and she's gonna be mad, but it looks really cool. I hey, love yeah, this. I'm doing a compound update tour, let's me know 10 minutes before, so this is what it is. It's not gonna be clean, but you know what, it's fine. To be fair, we do have a compound group chat. There's like 30 people in it that all get texts from it, so a lot of people don't check the yeah, compound I chat. Think, The funny thing is she doesn't realize that you guys can't hear her because the mic's on me and not on her. Yeah. <laughs> she says she loves me so much and she's so excited to watch my video with me later today. Yeah. Aw. Anyway, she's got lots of cool decorations. It's a very Colette feeling shop. Um, we'll back up on out of here and I'll show you the rest. This is the car wash bay. Uh, until we get the water situation resolved, it hasn't really been used for much of washing cars because otherwise we will end up using all of the water for the home. So uh, most of the cars have been getting washed from a mobile detailing truck or Jeff will schedule and plan getting water for when he has to wash cars. Really in inconvenient, I know. We gotta get that figured out. And then in here is the little detailing area. I don't know where the light switch is, but all the detailing products live inside of this cabinet that's locked. I don't even get the key. <laughs> Figures. And then over here, this building, which Colette is gonna build out to be your shop, Right now has just been kind of auxiliary car storage. So I don't know, I'm assuming Colette made a video or Nick, Nick made a post, but Nick now works here full time with Colette, California Nick. So that's his S14 over there. And then Colette has some of her cars being stored in here. Evo, Z, FC, 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 RX-8. A lot of choking hazards on the floor. As we're rolling up to what is internally referred to as the linear burnout box, you'll find some random tire marks going through the grass. More often than I'd like, they're from me getting a little too carried away as I'm chasing people throughout the compound, okay? And then this is our storage container that we actually brought from the other building over here uh, because I already bought it and it works out well for storing things. Back here, sometimes we'll park cars, pallets. You don't wanna drive a car through here because there's usually nails and stuff in case you ever find yourself at the compound. Sure, I'll let you know. Another beautiful shipping receiving sign. However, you'd be surprised at how many times they would go to an, uh, like the lift building and drop packages there. That's not where you ship and receive. I kid, but we usually have most of the same drivers at this point and they already know where to go. So this place came with these stairs. We did end up buying one other set of stairs, but we need to get one more because every time we need to go up to my secret storage, I gotta get this thing out and it's a process. I don't think I've ever brought you guys up here in a video. Originally, I think I talked about this being, uh, I don't know if I talked about what this would be. I thought that this would be auxiliary storage for Drift HQ. It turned out to auxiliary storage for Adam because Adam has way too much stuff and getting this place kind of enabled me to get more junk that I don't need, like a beautiful S15 front clip, okay? Because things pop up like, oh, I want an S15 dash. Oh, and I would like the rack from this S15. Or for an extra $300, you could have the whole clip with a hood, fenders, all this junk that I don't need under here, subframe. So things like that have been happening to me pretty often. And that's how this place was born. So we've got an A90 super hood. We've got lots of spare parts from the FD car, Wise Fab, bunch of radiators, some rear crash structures, infinite 
supply of Blitzo 3 lips and barrels. Uh, we've got a 180SX Type X with an OEM front lip, uh, brand new cookie bumper, a uh, bunch. I basically have the full 180SX uh, body kit. You guys probably know where I got that from, but we won't talk about that. Um, and then we've got my collection of doors that are eventually going to become uh, like hung on my wall and look cool as displays. I love that because you can kind of see the differences between both liveries. Yeah, that, okay. Subframes, we got a lot of subframes, a sea of exhausts, more body panels, skirts. This is fun though. Come over here and I'll show you where the real fun happens. Got Turbo S wheels, got a 6XD transmission that was a spare that I just sold, and then a 2JZ race engine that I need to figure out if I'm gonna sell or if I'm gonna put in something. There's a red E92 interior for an E92 M3 that I bought a while ago, and then I sold because it was too rusty to use for drift week, and then I didn't end up going down that drift week. I forgot I had an SR20 up here, but there's a black SR20 up here that I got at one of the FD stops. And then we've got some diffs. It's a lot of diffs. Some drive shafts, some blocks. Is it bad that like, I don't even remember what those blocks were from. Let's look, let's find out. This doesn't look like a Jay-Z, this looks like a RB. Oh, I think this is Tommy's rod knocked GTE bottom end that I stole the Neo head off of. And then this, uh, what's this? This looks like a 2J. It's probably cracked, I guess, or something's wrong with it. And then over there, we don't need to go over there. That's just kind of auxiliary storage for merch. Got a bunch of LZMFG steering wheels. Support LZMFG by LZMFG steering wheels. Got a set of Recaro confetti seats. If you're an OG subscriber, you'll be able to recognize what car the seat came from. See, that's why I got the front clip. S15 dash. In here, uh, we redid the floors. They used to be green carpet. Um, I don't think we did any painting in here. Maybe replaced some lights, but this is kind of like operations for merch. Nothing really gets packed in here unless I maybe need to come sign it, but stickers get made over here. We've been starting to do more sticker packs and stuff. We make all our die cut stickers in house just for you guys. And we've got lots of cool different vinyls and stuffs. This is internally referred to as the linear <laughs> And this is internally referred to as the signature table. Uh, I've always signed anything with any order. All you gotta do is put it in the order comments. So if you order anything from LZMFG, it basically gets put on this table and then I get a text. SIGs are ready for you, Adam. And the SIGs are the signatures, not what you guys might think a SIG is. So I come here, I sign it. It usually comes to you guys quick, but if I'm out of town, it might take a little bit longer. In here, this is where all the packing goes on for merch. Uh, the shelves are actually a bit empty right now. Um, we just had the E36 drop that like pretty much sold out in 24 hours. So that was awesome. And then also we have all the parts that are going out to the people that got steering wheels and chairs. Uh, I signed a bunch of parts from the S15, um, but that promo's over because we ran out of stuff to give away. But in here, this used to be like a welding room. We put down some Swiss tracks that I had left over from the FD activation area since we're not doing FD with our rig anymore, uh, which made this place look a lot nicer. Some shelves. We got hats and hoodies, lots of fun stuff at lzmfg.com. And in here we have the Drift HQ building. It's weird because I've given this tour to so many people that have stopped by, but I feel like I haven't given you guys a comprehensive tour in a while. Uh, but this building was originally the automotive shop of the previous owner, then became our automotive shop. I told you guys that I planned to move to the other shop because from the very day that we closed on the compound, we already knew that the Drift HQ thing was happening. We just didn't tell you guys because we didn't know that it was for sure happening. I guess we did know it was for sure happening, but we wanted to save the element of surprise. So there was another lift here, and I think actually more lifts back here. Those are all gone. It's down to one lift, and that lift will eventually be removed once the other Drift HQ shop is set up. And then we have two doors for shipping and receiving, which is why this building made more sense than my giant shop with the pass-through doors. So you guys have seen these shelves. We talked about it before, but we have a lot of stock from PRP over in Australia. It makes a lot of cool stuff. Um, a lot of PMC adapter kits filling the shelves over here if you guys need to adapt any transmissions. We've got lots of ISR parts here, DEI. We've got a ton of Garrett turbos. So I don't want to make it seem like this is a marketing video. You guys already know most of the stuff, but on the off chance that someone clicks this video that hasn't seen it in a while, if I could sell them a turbo, it'd be sick. Until we get a permanent setup for the dyno, we haven't decided on which building it's necessarily gonna go into, but over here, we were able to run a wire through the wall from what used to be the machine shop. So whenever we have to tune a car, we just pull out the hub dynos and we set it up in here. And the reason why we had to move the dyno from where it used to be is because this space that used to be kind of like a machine shop and where we originally called the tractor room turned into offices. So I'm pretty sure we showed you guys this at one point, but D found some pretty cool cubicles. It's got some nice floors in here. And then this setup over here has a little sim rig and a bunch of the demo seats that we have on little stands and stuff. Then in here, 
They just finished up this beautiful new office. Duarte is sick with the granite, check this out. The craziest conference desk table I've ever seen. So this is Duarte and Chris's office and it's really cool and I'm jealous. When you guys see our office, you'll know why. We've shown this area a bunch. I talked about this corner becoming the little tire machine area. The vision came complete. We've got a bunch of ignite barrels. We've got a little ignite tote and we've got the tire machine and the tire balancer from MPAC. In here, you guys have seen the paint booth. I don't really need to show too much detail. It works, it works great. Uh, the oven doesn't currently work and it's gonna be expensive to get that whole system reserviced so we haven't done it yet. But in here, Colette got the whole paint mixing room outfitted with House of Colors stuff, which is really cool. Super baller paint. Uh, but again, in here we just kind of cleaned up and just got right to work. Over here is the sea of engines. So there's a bunch of random stuff. The burn GT350 motor sold. I've got someone I think that's coming soon to come pick up the new GT350 motor. Uh, actually, I think he might've backed out. So if you guys wanna buy it, it's 20 grand. Look on eBay, I'm hooking it up. It's got 300 miles on it, Gen 2 motor. Talk to me nice. Back here, more storage and random car parts and body kits and things. And then over here, we have these giant racks of wheels and tires. The idea is to be able to just back a black trailer, like my black trailer, into this building and be able to just load all the wheels and tires, which would be really cool. It's been super convenient having this prep room. Anything to do with fiberglass, sanding, bodywork, keeps all the dust and contaminants out of uh, the air and out of getting into other stuff. So right now, look in here. The homie Josh is getting some work done on the C4 Corvette. He's the man when it comes to fiberglass repair. If we've got a tag, I'll put it on the screen right now. Can I show what you did on the other side? Yeah. What he actually did on this, he puts fiberglass tape down and he is able to fill the gap that there was on this kit. I think we've mentioned before, but this Bjork kit was like a prototype and we're getting them remade in better shape. But since I had one of the prototypes, we wanted to make it fit super good. So we laid down this tape like you see here and it was able to fill in and close the gaps to where now, Look how good that looks. Over here, this, uh, I don't remember, okay, so this used to be an upholstery room. All those tables have become scattered around the compound and we actually use them for a lot of different stuff. This is eventually gonna be like the fab shop and the idea is we'll be able to close this door, keep this whole area air conditioned and open the door to the shop. So we'll effectively enlarge in the shop and then the shop can kind of encompass all this. I'd like to really do uh, like Nicer floors in here, maybe polished concrete or something that's really durable for the shop, but also looks nice. So you have that transition from gray to more gray and not gray to brown. And then we'll go up here. And this is more so the parts that we use on a daily basis. If we need to grab something, everything from spark plugs, turbos, shelves separated by car, like this is a JZX shelf. Over here, this looks like a S chassis shelf, a Z shelf. Uh, I think this is probably R chassis shelf. And then just lots of shelves dedicated to cars and bins of hose. I got hose for days. Don't tell Colette though. Get it? This is just kind of our like fluids room. So there's some random things of fluids and cans of paint and stuff. I kind of don't like it here though. And I want to put it in a cabinet in the shop just because it's annoying to keep running back and forth when you need to grab stuff. But uh, the idea is to get as much clutter and stuff out of the shop that doesn't really need to be in the shop. And it's worked well because it is so close. I would like to maybe put a bathroom in there though. We need more bathrooms here. Oh, I need to talk about that. Give me a minute. <laughs> we redid the carpet on this area too, with the same stuff you saw in the other place. It kind of peels up and we painted the railing with a fade. It's cool, kind of tacky. I don't know how I feel about it, TBD. Up here, this is the lounge that I've been super excited about since day one. Pop some new light bulbs in it. You can change the color on them on a phone and I play with it a little too much. Got a pool table off Facebook Marketplace. Duarte and Savio got me hooked up. Some granite countertops my podcast table, which is coming soon to my YouTube member section. I'm gonna post them there and then eventually they'll be on like other streaming platforms. Got a little lounge area that's still not built out finally with my DIY hung TV, some speakers around here, and then my collection of Blitz 03s and a simulator that I still need to build a computer for. I'm running out of breath, there's a lot of stuff to talk about and I'm trying to keep it really quick because I wanna keep engaged. I wanna make sure that everyone on the video likes the video because if they all like the video and they all leave a comment, my engagement's super good, I please the algorithm and when algorithm is pleased, everybody's pleased. So in here, in our offices, the other day we had a real situation. You might notice that all the carpet is ripped out by the bathroom. Well, what would you say if I told you that we've had issues with the septic system in this place from day one? And the other day, it all came up from the ground and went all over the place and it smelled like trash. Uh, two biggest issues with this place that we've been fighting 
uh, the septic system and the water system. I already talked about pretty much replacing like all the AC units here and that was the biggest, I don't want to say unforeseen expense because we knew it was going to happen, but that was the biggest expense in the beginning. Now that water system and the septic system are two huge expenses that we're dealing with now. And I'll show you the septic system in the rear and you'll kind of understand why. But we redid this kitchen pretty early and it came out beautiful. Again, massive shout out to Savio, hooking it up, getting the granite all done. Yeah, the sinks don't work either right now. So that's the whole thing. But we'll come over here and you can see this is our little package room with packages and things. The bathroom got redone too, but we're not going to go in there because it stinks. And then in here, actually we should show the bathroom because the tandem potties are pretty cool. <gasps> Toilets. Redone bathroom. James office. My office that I haven't been working on because it smells really bad down here. That's why it's a mess. Don't look at it. And then meh office. Jimmy has a bunch of parts in here too. Jimmy's parts are literally everywhere. <laughs> I know maybe if you know septic systems, this will make sense to you, but it was never really like done properly when it was first installed. I think it was not raised up enough, but it doesn't drain properly and the system isn't big enough for the amount of people here. We've got over 20 people in here every single day. Um, so that's gonna need to get redone. Look, it's a Pajero. The reason that's being driven over here uh, is because I've decided it's time to sell the Pajero Mini. I don't do anything with it and it's kind of killing me seeing it sitting. So we're gonna detail it up today and post some uh, stuff on like Facebook Marketplace or something to see if someone wants to buy it. Or maybe one of you will. You never know. All-wheel drive, turbo. It's high mileage. I think it's got like 200,000 kilometers on it, but she rips. There's a lot of concrete I like to get redone here. Like this ground right here is kind of a little cobbled up. Um, we've got someone that we've been talking to and we might have some like little additions put on. Like this right here, creating all that grass to be just filled in one straight pathway would be really cool. So then it'll kind of open up the burnout pad a lot and some cool little obstacles if we can make it happen but uh, it's gonna be expensive, so that's, I'm pushing that off for now. These are our, our temporary potties that we got. We had to get a, a bathroom trailer because of the whole situation. So there's that. This is where everyone parks their cars. And then the toter home is actually, hopefully, fingers crossed, gonna be sold this weekend. Got a cool dude coming down from Tennessee. Uh, I think he's gonna take it. So we'll be saying bye to my beloved toter home. I'm gonna miss it. There's a lot of good times in that thing. Chelsea Denofa sprayed mud on my wall and never cleaned it. I originally didn't think we'd end up using this garage for anything, but uh, as we stay more at the compound and less at the other house that I have, it became kind of inconvenient to have cars parked really far away and then have to take a golf cart in the middle of the night to and from the house. So this turned into the daily garage. I uh, just got the Swiss tracks done in here so it looks a lot nicer. Uh, maybe put up some decorations. I kind of want this to be like the Porsche corner and then this is just whatever other car is rotating. Uh, probably most likely Colette's car. The chaser's just in here because we got back late. Um, and then over here, we've got all the compound go-karts, which have been a blast around here. We're going to be using them soon. It's been a little bit too long since we used them. And then we got the crazy carts that Taxi Garage just got all dialed in, so we can start ripping these things again. It's crazy. We've, uh, I'd say probably a total of maybe three to four months of living in this house collectively over the time that we've owned the compound. So we've been staying here a lot, and we've done pretty much absolutely nothing to the place. This whole pool area got power washed because it was really like gross and grimy and all of this was really gross and grimy. Other than that though, uh, planted some little flowers and bushes. The dog's got a little poo-poo pad, but you could tell they don't like using it because there's poo-poo everywhere else. And then we've got this log. Oh, dude, I so badly would love to try to run across it right now. That'd be risky with your mic equipment. They have these at Woodward where you run on them and try to spin the other person off. So why not get one, I said, and I did. And I've used it once because it got too cold. So walking through here, we got a little cabana where the food and stuff. And then here we got the puppies. We've done absolutely nothing to this entire place, decoration-wise. It pretty much exists just how it was before. Hey, she doesn't like being filmed, Mike. It looks identical to how it did before. Um, zero decoration changes, even using the furniture that came with the place. It's one of those things where I've struggled with not committing fully. Like, I feel like either we gotta tear this whole entire place down and rebuild it, because I don't wanna like buy stuff and then buy it twice, because all this stuff is just super dated in here. Bro, dude, come on. So anyway, yeah, this place hasn't really changed at all. And last but not least, we have the shop. You guys have seen this area more than anything else in videos, and this is probably the space that is undergoing the biggest transformation. I forgot to mention up when we were up in the lounge that the windows did get extended like I had in my original vision. It's kind of crazy that it's been less than a year here and so much has changed, but also not so much has changed. But walking in here, it's the same floors that came with the place. The uh, walls got painted gray that used to be tan. We got Nice new Cree lighting, the Ben Pack lifts, 
We have the air system that we haven't fully run yet, but we have the reels, and then we have the power systems on the side. And then the stationary cars or like projects that can be worked on the ground kind of live over here. And then in here, we have kind of the main common workspace with that being the fab lift. Uh, Nick's working on Colette's Corvette over there right now. And then the R32, which I was gonna make you guys wait for the next video, but for the end of this video, since we're pretty much wrapping up the tour, we give you a little sneak peek. Cause tomorrow, fingers crossed, I don't know if it'll be in the next video or not, but this thing is pretty dang close to starting up again. We ran into a little bit of an issue with the turbo side and we might change some things around. But regardless, this thing is gonna be back and ripping very soon. For those of you that have been asking for this video, I hope that this had some of the stuff that you wanted to see in regards to compound updates. It was fun making it. Like I said, I've given this tour a lot of times, but I haven't given it to you guys. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I've got another super special video coming up next that I'm really excited to post, and I hope you guys will enjoy that one too. Make sure you hit the like button, comment, subscribe, turn the notification bell on. I always forget to ask you guys to do that, but I'll see you soon. When you say, when you say,